What's up everybody, it's Sean here, back today to give you guys a review of the Nike Air Max 3 or Air Max 90 in the Radiant Red or Infrared colorway. This pair released on November 9th for 140 US dollars and they're slated for a future Canadian release in men's sizes for a retail price of 180 Canadian dollars. The official colorway for this shoe is white, black, cool grey and radiant red and to many people, not just Air Max fans out there, this pair is one of the sneaker releases of the year. If you're even remotely interested in sneakers, you've probably seen or heard of the infrared Air Max 90s. This pair is one of the most iconic Nike shoes of all time, designed by Tinker Hatfield. It's been retro many times since its initial release in 1990. And finally, Nike has decided to re-release these five years later after the 2015 release. Just a heads up for those that aren't aware of the Air Max 90s history, the original Air Max 3 when it released back in 1990, the color that we now know as infrared was actually high vent orange. It wasn't until the 2003 retro that Nike dubbed them the infrareds and since then that name has just stuck. So I was doing some digging online about why this pair is called Radiant Red and I was able to find some websites that stated that the original 1990 version some were called Radiant Red while others were called Hyvin Orange. So either way it seems like the naming of this shoe is intended to be a callback to the 1990 release. So first off, here's a quick look at the box. This comes in this OG inspired retro looking box. We have this red color on the top with Nike branding in the corner, and then this gray stripe pattern at the very bottom. Inside the box, they also give us this Nike Air hang tag. There's also these arch supports that you can put underneath the insole. And last but not least, there's this old looking advertisement on this paper. And I'm guessing this is a recreation of the original Air Max 90 ad. So you can see Nike's really trying to bring back the original experience of these Air Max 3s or Air Max 90s. As for the shoes, these Air Max 3s or Air Max 90s as I'll call them for the rest of this review, these are done in that recrafted tooling made to look as close to the originals as possible. So here in my hand, I have the 2015 version as well. And if you compare them side by side, you can see that the 2015 version, it's a lot bulkier, it's a bit higher cut as well. And it doesn't have that same sleekness that the 2020 version has. Diving straight into the upper of the 2020 version. So the base layer is constructed using this white colored nylon. And then surrounding the outer edge of the toe box, here we have this gray colored suede. This suede is a bit darker compared to the suede on the 2015 version. And to me at least, it feels much more like genuine suede as opposed to the felt like material that they usually use for the Air Max 90s. Overlaid on top, we have this black leather mud guard. And this runs down the length of the shoe, but you'll notice that compared to the 2015 version, the mudguard is much more sleek and much thinner at the toe box. I do have to say though that the leather used on the 2020 version, it feels a little bit more synthetic than the 2015 version. So that's one thing I prefer on the older version over these ones. For the eyelets, this is constructed out of TPU. So the bottom one is done in this radiant red color and the top one is colored in black. Below this, the quarter panel is covered in that suede once again and then overlaid on top, we have a darker gray colored swoosh. Moving down on the mud guard towards the back heel, there's this cutout, which exposes this radiant red colored Air Max branding. And then the remainder of the upper of the back heel, this is covered in that white nylon. Stitched in the center of the back heel, we have this rubber overlay in this radiant red color with Nike Air branding in black. For the laces, these come with these flat white colored cotton laces. And underneath this, we have this padded nylon tongue with this Nike Air Max tag stitched on in the very center. On the back side of the tongue, so this is done in this radiant red color, and we have this retro inspired size tag, which was another nice added touch. The inner liner of the shoe is done in this gray colored textile, and they've stamped on the size of the shoe on the medial side, so in my case, size 10, and again, this is a nod to the OG release. Taking out the insoles, these come with a radiant red colored insole, and we have Nike Air branding stamped on the heel in white. The upper of these Air Max 90s sits atop this full length polyurethane foam midsole. This is left primarily in white, however the heel wedge is painted in this radiant red color and underneath the heel there's this cutout which exposes the Nike Air Max unit that's found within the midsole. Compared to the 2015 version, the radiant red color on the 2020 version is a bit lighter and a bit brighter compared to the darker infrared on the 2015s. Turning the shoe over to the bottom, here we have your classic Air Max 90 outsole. This is for the most part done in this black colored rubber, but we have hits of radiant red on the top of the toe along with the sides of the heel giving it a very nice splash of color. So that breaks down the construction and the look of these shoes. In terms of sizing, so I'm a true size 10 slightly on the wider side, and ever since Nike has recrafted the Air Max 90, I've been able to go true to size on these pairs with no problems. So for me, I pick these up in a size 10, and they give me a very nice snug fit. 
If you're someone that prefers more of a roomy fit, then you can get away with going a half size up. But compared to older Air Max 90s where I've always had to go up a half size, these guys are perfectly fine true to size. Next up, talking about the comfort. Overall, whatever Nike did with these shoes, they are actually very, very comfortable. As far as a shoe from 1990 goes, I think somehow Nike has retooled this shoe, incorporating a softer foam maybe, but whatever it is, they feel great on feet. This is obviously not gonna be a shoe you're using for running, and at this point, it's strictly a lifestyle sneaker, but as far as that goes, it feels great on feet, and it's gonna be the perfect shoe for just everyday casual use. Finally, talking about the quality of this shoe, all in all, I'm pretty pleased. The materials, while they weren't anything super premium, I feel like they were definitely an upgrade over the 2015 version, except for the leather mudguard that I mentioned earlier. Everything else though I was totally happy with, and the craftsmanship on my pair, especially the nice sloped toe box, I was very very happy with this. So with all that being said, now let's lace up these Radiant Red Air Max 90s and I'll show you guys how these look on feet. All in all, I'm super happy and super stoked to add this pair to the collection. I have no issues with Nike re-releasing this classic pair over and over again. And in fact, I recently sold my 2015 pair to pick these up. If we're talking strictly sneaker releases, not necessarily brand new silhouettes, this is definitely up there for my shoe of the year. And I'm happy to see that the resale prices on this pair is pretty much zero. So anyone that wants a pair of these in their collection can pretty much get them. So let me know in the comment section down below how you guys feel about this Radiant Red Air Max 90 or Air Max 3. How do you guys feel about this classic silhouette and this classic colorway? And did you guys manage to pick these up? Or for my Canadian viewers out there, are you planning on picking these up when they drop later on this month? If you guys like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Give me a follow on Instagram at sgo8. Check out my Twitter account at sean.go. And visit my website at seangoca So until next time, thanks so much for tuning in. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this review, and I'll catch you guys all in my next video.